made a good bit of progress on some of the terrain tools. Um, I've moved, they've given everything a proper spot. So we've got the terrain controls here. I've added some little sliders, strength adjustment to fall off um, on the edge there. Uh, oh, you would have seen that. I've added um, undo and redo. So if I drag a bit of this mountain up and I undo it or redo it, <coughs> uh, that works for all the all the tools. So if I flatten it, um, I'm not sure if I showed this off last time, but this, I've added this terrain smoothing tool. It takes the those harsh edges off the terrain there. Um, I've added a grid uh, toggle, so now it can be toggled on and off. Um, haven't done any work on the textures yet. So this was a, um, a very early attempt at it. So this is all static, There's the, but eventually I would be able to choose the texture and paint it on there, but I uh, haven't done anything with that yet. One thing I forgot to mention in this next section is you're probably going to wonder, oh, why don't you just drag them and drop them into Godot as like a normal person would? Well, it's because each tile on the terrain keeps track of what objects are in it. So when you're moving around and a tile unloads, it can unload all the objects and free up all that memory, um, which is very important for you walking around a huge world. Um, so that's why I've had to do it this way, because I couldn't find how to marry up dragging and dropping onto the terrain so it would know where I've dropped it, what map tile it's on, and then even if I knew that when I went to move it around again, how would I know to update this position across tiles, etc. So what I ended up doing was just when I click on the model and then drop it on the terrain, it makes a call to the map tile and says, hey, add this model into your map tile. And so that's how it knows. And then there's some other funky magic to get it to know that I've updated it. But basically, this whole next section doesn't make a whole lot of sense <laughs> without this so I forgot to mention that. So I did a bit more work on the uh, on adding models, added a little front end for it. Um, basically, I can select a model here and add it to the world um, and move it around. Uh, adjust. I've added a ability to snap to the terrain. So you see when I'm moving it here, it's falling around and it's hard to get on the terrain. If I click this on, it'll snap the origin to the terrain. So I can always get it right on the terrain. Um, you also might have noticed that when I get a certain distance away, they start to disappear. And that's because So if you think about in a in any other MMO that you've played, there'll be some like a big tower really far away, and you'll always be able to see it. Like you'll be walking around the map, you'll see this huge tower. But as you get closer, they'll sort of like the trees and the little bushes and the little candles, etc. They'll all start to fade into view. So essentially, there's two types of objects. There's the ones that are always there, and then there's ones that I'm calling dynamic. That should only be displayed when you're a certain distance away. So what I've done is I've added these dynamic objects that you can toggle on here and set a distance that they should appear from. So if I move 30 yards away or 30 meters away, um, you'll see that these ones snap into view and these ones that are not dynamic will stay there. So like, you know, you'd have the house is not dynamic or the tower is not dynamic and then all the bushes and any other little things are dynamic. So I'm going to jump into the game now and I'll show you um, some model loading from the server. So if I log in here, you'll notice that there's three player models that aren't in on the terrain in the editor because these have been 
packets have come over from the server and have instructed the client to create these models. So I can show you a little bit of that code now. Um, you jump to Realm Network. So there's a method that handles, it's going to handle create update um, packets. So here you can see it's making an object a creature, it's pulling all the data out of the packet, and then it's initi initializing this world unit class. And so the way I've split it up is I've got a base level object that has position, uh, that area, the for click the click area <coughs> of the model, um, and those are just for like you know static assets or like a a box that you click on to collect something or something anything that's not moving around. Uh, but for things that are moving around, they inherit the they inherit the world object, and I'm calling them units. So they can then find that physics the uh, kinematic body and the the ray cast that are in the model. Um, and then if I come in here and I set velocity to one and jump back to the client, they'll start moving. And so the way this would work would be the server would send movement data. So it would say, oh, the speed of the player is 110% and they're moving in this direction. And then it would come in here and go, okay, I've got an update packet for this player. I'm going to update their velocity, update their speed, and the client is going to simulate that. At the same time as those packets come in, there's going to be position data as well. And if they're too far away from that, ideally they'd be in the position they're supposed to be, but if they're too far away from that position, it's either going to snap them back or slowly move them closer towards the position they should be in. Um, and I had a very naive implementation of this working and it seemed to work okay probably because I'm right next to the server and I haven't really tested with any latency but um, yeah so I thought that was pretty cool so if I if I quit this and come back in again they'll be back at the start respawned where the server t tells them to spawn because it doesn't the server hasn't is not instructing these guys to move it doesn't know their positions um, so that's pretty cool, but I will go, there's going to be another video once I've sorted out the server side stuff on the networking and how I, the packets are structured. What I will do though is I'll leave some links in the description of sort of the inspiration that I'm using because I've never, I've never built an MMO before. Um, I have no idea what I'm doing, uh, to be honest with you. So I've just been digging around, finding some references, finding some articles, trying to piece it all together. Um, and I'll leave those links down below, but I will do another video where I go into a lot of detail about the server side and um, at least where I'm up to. So look forward to that one.